closed and how can we bring a sweetness to it? And so when I, when I read this poem, it was actually the last one I came across. I thought this is a, for me, this was a lovely way to start because um, this is entrenched in, um, in, in the, the shape of a prayer service, of an Orthodox prayer service and in Jewish tradition. And yet um, it's exactly of the moment. Um, and this poet is a modern Israeli poet. He lives mostly in the secular world, um, but this, is, this was still his reference point. So um, thank you. We're going to go on to um, our next poem. We're going to go back in time a little bit, but we're, we're not going back to, I'm just gonna warn you today, we're going to, uh, we're going to read from Zelda and from Amichai and then from another modern poet. Um, and we don't have any of our classic, beyond Amichai, I don't believe we have our classic strong uh, uh, poets, but uh, I thought these are the ones that speak to me. So, um, okay, let me, go ahead. I'm going to now unshare this and come back in a moment, one second, sorry. I am working on this. Okay, new share. Okay. Um, oh, hold on. Are you seeing anything on my screen right now? No. Besides me? The, the previous screen was sharing. That's it. No, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's all right. I'm going to find it again. Okay. Now I'm going to get to my next share. Um, sorry. I will be there in just with you in just a second. I need to open this up again. Somehow I closed it. So, um, we're getting there. Okay. This poem is um, a poem by um, the poet Zelda. She's a 20th century poet, um, born in Ukraine, um, and then eventually made her way to Israel. Um, and um, what I love about her, there's a, a liturgist and a poet, uh, poem, a poet herself, Marcia Falk, and she really has taken Zelda. She's known by only her first name and, um, and elevated her poetry. And so um, I am going to, sorry, let's see. This is the poem by Zelda. Um, I have many poems that I could read by Zelda, but this is one of them. So this is um, called Light a Candle. Do we have somebody who would read for us in the Hebrew? Let's see. Does anybody have access to the screen? Yeah, we can see it. If you don't have anybody, I can read again. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I, I, love, I love the Hebrew from a real Hebrew speaker. Go ahead. Okay. Hadliku ner, shtu yain, hashabat tofa balat, et hashemesh hashukat, Ashabat Yuredet Leat, Uviada Shoshanat Harekiim, Echtishtor Ashabat, Herach, Atsum Meir, Belev Sor Veuri, Echtishtor Ashabat, Et Sitsa Melachim, Belev Basar Meshuga Veholei, Hatitzmach Shoshanat Haal Mavet, Bedor Shal Avadim, להרס בדור של עבדים למוות. הדליקו נר שתו יין, השבת יורדת בלט, ובידה הפרח, ובידה השמש השוקעת. So this poem is written by Zelda. Zelda is a poem, a poet who really, she herself is religious, but she kind of, she has managed, she's a painter, she's an artist, um, she, the second part of her life, she really focused on her poetry, and she lived in, um, for her later years, in the neighborhood of Rehavia. And Rehavia, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is a part of Jerusalem that sort of borders religious um, neighborhoods and secular neighborhoods, and she's, she lives in both of these worlds. While she herself observed um, all of the uh, Kashrut and Shabbat, she um, would welcome people of all sorts into her home. And so when I look at this poem, I'll read it in English now, um, and then we can discuss it a little bit more. 
light a candle, light a candle, drink wine. Softly, the Sabbath has plucked the sinking sun. Slowly, the Sabbath descends, the rose of heaven in her hand. How can the Sabbath plant a huge and shining flower in a blind and narrow heart? How can the Sabbath plant the bud of angels in the heart of raving flesh? Can the rose of immortality grow in a generation enslaved to destruction, a generation enslaved to death? Light a candle, drink wine. Slowly the Sabbath descends and in her hand the flower and in her hand the sinking sun. Any thoughts before I offer mine? So for me, what really struck me about this, especially, was can the rose of immortality grow in a generation enslaved to destruction, a generation enslaved to death? I'm not sure what that means to you, but to me, while this could be echoes of the Holocaust, it can also be just as appropriate today in the, the 21st century and across the generations. A generation enslaved to death, not a generation fomenting death, but enslaved to it, and that it's in some ways inescapable and part of what is the human condition. And so for me, when I look at this poem, I see the, um, the command, light a candle, drink the wine. Um, to me, that is, um, it, there's a, a commandment here, hadlikuner, shtuyain, is this is what we can do about it. This is our way to, um, not be enslaved to the human condition. And the way that we can fight back and kind of lay down a marker against the negativities of the human condition are, are through Shabbat, through the Sabbath. And there's not a biblical commandment here. It's not about halakha. It's about lighting a candle and bringing wine. And the power to me of the softness even uses the word softly, the, the Sabbath has plucked the sinking sun. So the Sabbath creates the space and creates the time, and it creates it in a gentle way that opens up for us all sorts of possibilities. So that's my take on the Sabbath, on a lighted candle. I want to say something. Please do. I think that this uh, poem really fit our situation today. I have a feeling that it really can work, even if it was written many years ago. It really can work for our corona situation now. Mm -hmm. um, the idea that um, we are in some kind of Shabbat now. Most of us sit at home, we have time to relax. Uh, we have time to look on our life how we live them until today and mm. to think uh, if this is really, really how we like our life. And, and as a idea of a candle and wine, it's some kind of, um, you know, all our, our life we run like crazy. Now we have time to light the candle, to look on the candle, to drink the wine to enjoy the quiet and the slowly and to say, okay, would you like all what happened in the end of the, of the uh, story about mm -hmm. sadness and all those stuff? That's interesting. So you're saying in this poem, it reminds you not only of the beauty of Shabbat, but even a little bit of the beauty of this time right now. In some way. In some yeah. ways. Yeah. Interesting. Anyone else? You have to jump out. I can't see you actually when you raise your hands. So you just have to say jump in. Nice. Okay. Um, we're going to look at for time. I think we're going. Yes, we're going. We have. We have. We're going to look at three more. Um, the first I'm going to share with you right now. 
also, this next one is also by Zelda. Um, and this is one that we have, I see often in um, our um, liturgy. It's often, it's often actually falls at the end of, um, before um, a funeral or before a used core, but it's a lechol ish shem. Everyone there is a name or each of us has a name. And um, I want to include this because it's one of my favorite. Um, but I think that this, well, I'll tell you in a moment. I'm going to just read it for us in English. Each of us has a name, given by God and given by our parents. Each of us has a name, given by our stature and our smile, and given by what we wear. Each of us has a name given by the mountains and given by our walls. Each of us has a name given by the stars and given by our neighbors. Each of us has a name given by our sins and by our longing. Each of us has a name given by our enemies and given by our love. Each of us has a name given by our celebrations and given by our work. Each of us has a name given by the seasons and given by our blindness. Each of us has a name given by the sea and given by death. Anybody want to share what that means to them? I'll tell you for myself the reason that I included it. Like I said, it's one of my um, favorite poems, and it is by the same poet. Um, the reason for me is that I think that we all have different roles to play. Um, and and I'm, I'm going to scroll up so you can see the Hebrew um, as well. Um, each of us has our own uh, different roles that we are in different uh, places and, and things that we do. And so for some people, you might be mom. And for other people, you might be Ema. And for other people, you might be Mrs. So-and-so. And you might be somebody's sister, somebody's daughter, somebody's wife, or somebody's best friend, or somebody's lover. And, and we all have different names in that way. We all have different roles and um, responsibilities and possibilities. And so in this time of Corona, I like to think about what are the possibilities that we have, kind of like Israela just said now, where are the, the, where are the ways that we can either change our, um, our roles or our names, or, and what are the things that we want to hold on to and really elevate and take time for? So that's what I'm thinking about this poem. And I would want to say that uh, the last one is should not not low uh, moto for I I can't say but something like that. It's not an accident that that comes at the end because that gives uh, sort of a a summary of one's whole life when you, when we get to the the last minute then all of the other things that have come together and are put in place and. And that's our, um, you know, our final name, so to speak. It's so true. That is so true. I just want to add on too that the, you know, as we said before in the beginning, uh, that uh, poems in Israel um, are, are songs, and this is sung with a beautiful, beautiful melody. I know that uh, for a long time. It's a, it's a, it's a gorgeous uh, song, as well. Uh, and the, the other thing that I want to mention is that, you know, we're talking about this teaching that we teach our, uh, you know, in, in, in my classes, uh, that uh, Hashem is giving the name through the parents. So mm -hmm. the, in the beginning, if you scroll up, you can see, and I want to just read it uh, a little bit on the yes, Hebrew part. Please. All the way on the top. <speaking in Hebrew> Meaning that every name and everybody is important. That the name itself is such a uh, um, va has such a value that the Avivim Imo, his mother and father, gave it to him. But the, the inspiration of giving that name was Natan Lo Elohim. That's lovely. That's lovely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I always am surprised when people say that they don't know why their name is what they are. Um, because the name that your parents give you is so powerful. You know, it's important to know to know the story and the thinking behind it. 
And right. also that at the end, at the end, it truly is. Um, in our last moments, how we're remembered says, says everything about it. I was just going to say that the end of this one sort of connects to the end of the previous one. Mm -hmm. We have, um, you know, it culminates sort of with, with your death and you know, your life is sort of laid out in this poem and then how you die is sort of the, the book end on it. And then how in the previous poem, you know, where it says we're enslaved to death, mm -hmm. um, but it talks about sort of how you live your life through like the candle, drink the wine. So there's sort of a, to me, there's sort of a parallel, sort of like a, a lovely connection there. Sort of a, a call to action in a way. Is that what you mean? Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, it talks about, you know, living your life or I guess gives sort of directive to live your life in the other one, like you mentioned. And then in mm -hmm. this one, it sort of um, says, you know, how, how you'll be remembered, like the way you live your life and the different mm -hmm. parts of who you are or who you are. Um, but it ends in the same place, sort of the inescapable mortality of us being human. It's really nice. It's really nice. Thank you. Um, we're going to read, we're going to discuss one more and then I'm going to conclude and just give you one to take with you. Um, so um, the next one is by Yehuda Amichai. Um, and I have to get to it. I have to actually scroll down a little bit. My apologies to do that. Um, okay. So, and this is one I could not find the Hebrew for online. So um, this is a uh, I found this poem on a, on a site called Hub Pages, and it says, it's this Yehuda Amichai. Yehuda Amichai is sort of quintessential um, poet laureate of, is, of 20th century Israel. Um, his, he's known in some ways for his accessible um, poetry um, that speaks really to just the human condition. And it's called Near the Wall of a House. Near the wall of a house, painted to look like stone, I saw visions of God. A sleepless night that gives others a headache gave me flowers, opening beautifully inside my brain. And he who was lost like a dog will be found like a human being and brought back home again. Love is not the last room. There are others after it, the whole length of the corridor that has no end. And um, one of the, the um, poets, uh, one of the an, an analysis of this by um, a, po a poet named Linda Sue Grimes, she points out how in this very short, really 12 line poem, we see um, a growing expansiveness, a growing trans realization of something bigger than ourselves. So for me, when I look at this, near the wall of the house, painted to look like stone, that's something that's somewhat pedestrian, somewhat average. In contrast that, I saw visions of God. And then taking something that can normally be so full of anxiety, a sleepless night, but it gave this, it gave Yehuda Amichai, or the narrator, flowers and gifts. And he who is lost like a dog will be found like a human being to kind of reconnect with one's humanity. And by doing that, you're brought home again. That, that, that bringing of coming home is what connects you to your menschlichkeit, to your, your humanity. And love is not the last room. There are others after it, the whole length of the corridor that has no end. So I could, I could read the ending of this two ways. One is that, um, this is terrifying, <laughs> the, the love is not the last room, there are others after it, and the length of the corridor that has no end, or it can be that the story keeps going, um, and we just keep going along with it. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. For me, no discussion of poetry is um, is uh, appropriate without some Yehuda Michai. He's my sort of my my pillar in my rock when it comes to poetry. So 
So we're going to, um, we can keep, we can talk about this or we can go to my last poem that's also by a relatively modern uh, poet. I'm going to go up here and it's a, and this is my, this was, I took this as a gift and I'm giving it as a gift to you. Take this poem and copy it. And if you can see it, this is written by um, a poet, Almog Bahar. I read we about it. Yet, Rabbi. Pardon? Rabbi, we can't see it yet. Oh, well, then I need to share it with you. Huh. Hold on, why can't you see it? Let's see. I'm going to try it again. One more time. There it is. Okay. So it's called Take This Poem and Copy It. Can you see it now? Yes. Great. Okay. Do you see how it's written, first of all, before we even get to the words themselves? It's not written in stanzas. It's written just this single kind of, uh, it starts at the beginning, and it continues on and on and on, with the, so take this poem and at the end, make it yours in your own handwriting, in one sentence. And it's written in a way, in this unbreaking sentence, and it highlights the sense of being alive. I'll read it for you in English. I'll try, I can't do it all in one breath, but I'll go ahead and read it. Take this poem and copy it in your handwriting on a piece of paper and insert words from your soul between the words your hands copied. And notice the additions made by the words from your hands and the subtractions made by the punctuation and the spaces and the lines which are broken within your life. Take this poem and copy it a thousand times and distribute it to the people on the city's main streets and say to them, I wrote this poem. This is a poem I wrote. This is a poem I wrote. This is a poem I wrote. This poem I wrote. This I wrote this, I wrote. Take this poem and put it in an envelope and send it to the one your heart desires and include a short letter with it. And before you send it, change its title and at the end, add rhymes of your own. Spin the bittern and enrich the spare and bridge the cracked and simplify the clumsy and enliven the dead and square the truth. Many poems and make them his. Take this very poem and make only this one yours, for even though it is nothing special, which ignites your desires to make it yours, it also has no possessiveness of the kind which says a man's poem are his property and his only, and you have no right to meddle or ask anything of them. But this is a poem which asks you to meddle with it, to erase and to hold and add it is, and it is given to you freely, for free, ready to be changed with your hands. Take this poem and make it yours and sign your name on it and erase the previous names, but remember it and remember that every word is poetry and the offspring of poetry and the poetry is the poetry of many, not one. And someone after you will take your poem and make it his and command those after him, the children of poets, to take this poem and copy it on a piece of paper and make it yours in your handwriting. Any thoughts? So with this poem, um, I am, can you, can you all still see me? Yes. Okay, sorry, something's happening with mine and I can't see anybody anymore. So I'm just gonna talk to you for a moment. Um, what I love about this poem is uh, I had never read it until recently. I love the openness of it. And this is just a chance that we have to be together. And we have a chance to take ownership of all of this. Um, so with that, I am inviting each of you to take this poem or take the other poems of your heart and um, share them, share them with people and um, take the experiences that we're having and make them your own in your own special way. Hi, thank you very much. With that, I'm going to say farewell and um, thank you for taking the time today to be with me. And um, we have all sorts of wonderful um, 
goings on all day long, you can go to um, our website and you can see the different happenings. And if you've signed up for this one, then you've got the links to everything else. But if you need them, just email me. I can see you all again. It makes me feel much better. Um, uh, email me and we'll send it off to you. Um, so you'll know how to get on to other things all day long. And um, there is something, so that we have lots of local events and at 2 p.m. we're inviting everybody to a global celebration where we will join with people all over the world watching um, a huge celebration for Israel from, from Israel, I believe from Harford Soul. Okay. Robbie, thank you so, so much. much, it was beautiful. Thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. 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 Bye everybody. Bye.